our prayers for her heart. And um, uh, what, what is what is her problem? AFib. AFib. Okay. Mean it means that sh that her heart is not beating correctly, or maybe the lower part is faster. Is that, that the, upper, yeah, the AFib. The way I understand it, AFib is the upper part of the heart is is beating out of sync kind of with the lower part yeah but you, it can go either way yeah and i have uh um pvcs which is the lower heart that does that yeah yeah don't you usually have a pacemaker for those for uh, um I, I think it's when 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 it's not beating fast enough when it's because uh, i do that yeah yeah i have and, uh, I just take magnesium and it fixes my problem. <laughs> <laughs> All right, and then we need to be in prayer for Bobby. <clears throat> Continue to pray for just every day. He prays that he can take, get stronger and stronger and uh, become more in a rebate as far as getting better in the hospital and the well that he's in. <clears throat> um, do we have any other prayer requests? Let's be in prayer for our, uh, Betsy and uh, Mike is on his way. Our Mike is in heaven. And uh, so now she has to get into the momentum of her life. <clears throat> and so let's be in prayer for Betsy. We don't need to be in prayer for Mike. And um, <clears throat> so let's uh, go into prayer and then go into our study in Hebrews. Let's pray. Heavenly Father, how grateful we are for the Word of God. It is so much fun. It is so rich to get enlightened in the Scriptures, learning about Jesus Christ. So, Father, we pray your Spirit will open our eyes to things you'd have us to see and to understand in Hebrews. We pray these things in Christ's name and for his sake. Amen. <clears throat> now, <clears throat> for years... I listened to R.B. Theme, and uh, he talked about Jesus Christ as the uh, uh, celebrity. And uh, so I'm, I'm going to change that to preeminence, the preeminence of Christ. He called him a celebrity? Celebrity. Well, so, that was interesting on, on Facebook. They said, who's your favorite celebrity? Yeah. And I so wanted to put Jesus Christ, but... Yeah, he's so much more than a celebrity. Yeah. When I think of celebrity, I think about all these. Yeah. Exactly. Me too. Yeah. So let's uh, begin in uh, Hebrews chapter 3. Last week we started it in, in verses 1 and 2. Hebrews chapter 3, verse 1. Therefore, holy brethren, partakers of a heavenly calling, consider... Jesus. Consider Jesus. Consider him as the apostle, high priest of our confession. Now verse 2. <clears throat> he was faithful to him who appointed him as Moses also was in all his house. Now what's interesting here is that we're now dealing with the Old Testament. The book of Hebrews is New Testament, but it's written to so many people that are oriented with the Old Testament. Now, while Moses was faithful to Israel, Jesus Christ is faithful to God, the Father, for all eternity and faithful to all, not just to Israel. So now we're going to verse uh, 3. In our study, verse 3 and following. For, that's important when we get there, for he has been counted worthy of more glory than Moses. By just as much as the builder of the house has more honor than the house. For every house is built by someone. But the builder of all things is God. Five. Now Moses was faithful in all God's house 
as a servant. Now the house is the is the dispensation of Israel. So Moses is faithful in all God's house and the uh, dispensation to Israel as a servant for a testimony of those things which were to be spoken to later. But Christ was faithful as a John, as a son over his house, whose house we are, the church. <clears throat> if we hold fast to our confidence and boast of our hope firm until the end. Now this is interesting because in that it is speaking about Jewish age. <clears throat> History started around 4000 BC to Abraham from 4000 BC to Abraham which was about 2100 BC to the time when Israel was taken into e Egypt when uh, about 1870 BC to 1440 BC to Moses leaving Egypt and entering into the promised land in 1405 BC. I'm not going to argue with the dates of dating, buddy, but that's good conservative dates. The greatest of the period of Israel was Moses with five books of Moses, but he was damned most uh, most uh, time the cursed, most despised, maligned, slandered by his own generation. He was a, not a, he was not appreciated by his own people. Some two million Jews complained to Moses, but they were aimed at God. They. Complain, they complained to Moses, but they were really mad at God. But no matter, no matter how they maligned him, no matter how they hated him, no matter how they despised his authority, they stayed under his authority and leadership. Only Joshua and Caleb and, uh, and their families and the Ethiopian woman Moses' second wife and maybe a few other people uh, was admi admir admiring Moses that is it is yet, it is yet he, he led them for 40 years under those circumstances Moses was great and the Jews in every other generation recognized his greatness right up to this very day. Even Jews who were against God did recognize Moses in the history. But the Lord himself loved and respected Moses. Look in the Bible at Numbers chapter 12. Numbers chapter 12. Verse 7, not so with my servant Moses. He is faithful in all my household. The house of Moses is the time which we're dealing with in our study. Now, Hebrews 3.3, 3, we come to one, uh, one who is preeminent to Moses, preeminent and superior to Moses. And of course, that's Jesus. Hebrews 3, 3, 4. He has been counted worthy of more glory than Moses. By just uh, so much as the builder of the house has more honor than the house itself. Now let's take a look. Verse 3. 
I'm not going to be able to stop with every one of the words and all of this. I don't think you really are interested that, to do that. But let's start off with the first one, though. For. For. The Hebrew is, is explanatory. The best way to translate for is for example. For example. He has been counted worthy. First of all, who is the one who is the counting of another as worthy? Who's doing the talking? It's God. God himself. One may consider some movie star as an, a worthy of something. It should be, so it really it should be our parents. That is the real uh, worthy one, worthy one in our, in our lives. <clears throat> uh, in the word of God, in history, God is the only one who is actually worthy of glory. Jesus Christ is always worthy. He is used here as the passive voice, which means the, the subject receives it, the Greek, the Greek. Jesus receives worthy from God. God considered Joseph, J Jesus as worthy so as fit to fit at his right hand at the point of his resurrection. There is glory that belongs to to Jesus. Now, then Moses. So we're dealing with him. With him on a, for he has been counted worthy of more glory than Moses. If the writer were picking a hero in the church, he would have picked the apostle Paul. But he, ref, he is referring the hero of Israel. And therefore, it's Moses. Continuing verse 3. By just so much as the builder of a house has more honor than the house. Now we move to verse 4. For every house is built by someone, but the builder of all things is God. Now, the house here is Hebrews that is talking about is dispensations. Each dispensation is the house. And here, this is talking about every dispensation. First, God uses human agents to bring every dispensation into being. And in, con in context is Moses in the specific house of Israel, all things. In verse 3 and verse 4, all things. Now, this refers to everything that Christ constructed as God. The essence of God. And God is the creator. Remember, Jesus Christ is the creator. Jesus Christ is God. So Jesus Christ as God is the creator, especially God the Son is the issue at this point. <clears throat> Jesus Christ is the only creator. John 1, 3, Colossians 1, 16, Hebrews 1, 10, which we've already studied. Jesus Christ is the creator. Moses and all others involved as agents are involved, but the one, Christ, having constructed all things, is God. God, Jesus Christ, is the only one who is the creator of all things. Now, let's now understand this passage. Understand what's going on. So I've got a few points for you. One, Jesus Christ is the author of the dispensation, Hebrews 1, 2. That's where we get that. Jesus Christ is the author of the dispensation, Hebrews 1, 3, 1, 2. Second, 
Jesus Christ is the only preeminence. Jesus Christ is the only preeminence. Moses is one of the great constructors in the age of Israel. Distinction must be made between preeminence of Jesus Christ and the great constructors throughout history. And by the way, in the church age, any believer can become great by growth in the word of God. Any one of you can do this. This is not selected just for a few. Three, Jesus Christ is unique person of the universe. The only, the only preeminent one. The only one who is preeminent. In this passage, he is recognized as the preeminent because he is God and therefore infinite superior to all creatures referred to in Hebrews. Secondly, he is recognized because he is priesthood, the head priesthood. Hebrews chapter 7, verse 24. Thirdly, because of his kingship, Hebrews 1.8. What we're looking here is Jesus Christ is the preeminent one. He is the preeminent one for the following reasons. He is therefore superior to all creatures referred to in Hebrews. Secondly, he is recognized because he is the priesthood of the of, uh, all people. And then thirdly, because of his kingship, Hebrews 1 4. Fourth, because of his relationship to the plan of the Father, his relationship to the Father, and the fact that he is the revealer of the Godhead to mankind, and he is the advocate and intercessor from mankind to God. He is the mediator. Therefore, he is, there are many reasons why Christ is the only preeminent. Hebrews 1, 3. Now point four. The object of the book of Hebrews is occupation above all others to the person of Jesus Christ. How do I know that? Look at 12, 2 sometime. And then finally 5, in the history of grace, there are many contributors of grace, but there is only one preeminence who is the source of all grace. The only preeminence who is the source of all grace is Jesus Christ. He is the source of grace for us beginning at the point of our salvation, Ephesians 2, 8 and 9, we first taste grace by believing in Jesus Christ. Okay, Moses was but Moses. Verse 5, now Moses was faithful in all God's house. As a servant, Moses was faithful. God's house, that's a, 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 the, this, the dispensation of Israel. As a servant for a testimony of those things which were to be spoken later. Okay. In every period, God uses human agency. In the age of the, of the Gentiles, God used men like Adam, Seth, <clears throat> Methuselah, Noah. In the age of Israel, God used men like Abraham, Joseph, Moses, Joshua, <clears throat> various ju uh, judges like Samuel, David, prophet like Elijah and Elisha, Israel, uh, Jeremiah, and others. Now, in the church age, 
God uses the apostles. He uses pastor teachers. He uses many ladies. In the middle, in the millennial, God the Father uses God the Son, Jesus Christ, as the Son of David. In this verse, however, Moses is said to be a special in his own house. But here Moses is emphasized himself alone was faithful. One of the most wonderful words in the Bible. Here is, he, he, he is referred to as be, being faithful with the connotation of faithfulness being dependable. He was dependable. Stability. All the 40 years he led, he was dependable and stable. St give stability to the people who do not want to go his way. It means that Moses is faithful to God in being dependable to God, while others do not want to do things God's way. Moses was faithful in that he was dependable, trustworthy in all his house, the dispensation of Israel. These are the things God put into his word to lead to let us know that is what you should be before God if you desire to be before God faithful you should be faithful in that you are dependable in the plan of God now the next phrase in all his house was faithful in all his house that is in the entire dispensation. House is used for dispensation. He was dependable in leading Jews as they were leaving Egypt. He was faithful, dependable, at the Red Sea. Everything he had to do in leading these people, Moses was in grace. He was graceful, he was faithful when he came down the mountain and the people were in idolatry. Yes, he was faithful. But he led them truthfully through the mountain. Why was it possible with God to reveal things, the entire realm of the law to Moses? Why was it possible by God to lead Moses in the writing five books? Because the thing that is greatly about Moses is the fact that he was faithful. He was positive to God and to God's word. Now, people, we can now go on and on be about Moses but let's stop and think about ourselves it is up to every one of us to be faithful to God to pastor teachers to other leaders in the church to leaders in their life it is so important that every one of you remain faithful to God in the short time we have on earth and it is short you <clears throat> may lose things along the way but you might but you must remain faithful along the way in spite of losing Moses <clears throat> longed to see our day that's what's amazing Moses longed to see our day why <laughs> Why would this man long to see our day? Because it was a part of God's plan that was still a mystery to him. Therefore, Moses longed for our day. 
I hope that and pray that you are so thankful to God all the time for your knowledge and work where you are in history. Moses wrote the original music that Jews sang every day. Not only in 40 years in the desert, but as they crossed the Jordan and for many generations for the next 500 years of Jewish history, the songwriter was not Abraham, I was not uh, 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 Elvis. Oh, Elvis. It was not Elvis. It was Moses. <laughs> Moses. Do you love to sing hymns that are truthful? Whatever God calls for you to do, you want to be faithful to God. Now, as a servant. Read that in our passage. As a servant. So, there you are. Are you ready to be a servant? We study the Word of God, and one of the reasons is to learn. Here we learn that we are to be a servant. When it is time to be a servant, the believer is must be faithful, must be dependable, trustworthy in being a servant. It is getting near when I will not be here to teach the Word of God, but there will be people ready to be servants, ready to be teachers, ready to take on in the servant of God. What we are studying here is Hebrews 3, is the failure of all the of the people of the Exodus generation. There was one man, one man with doctrine in his soul, who was faithful and dependable and able to lead the people out of Egypt and into the church age. Every believer in the, this congregation can be like Moses but some will never make it it can be any one of you can be like Moses but some will never make it never make it because of indifference to the word of God will never be faithful and dependable to God I hope and pray that every one of our church in this church are listening to the teaching of the Word of God. But I fear not. I fear they've got other things to do than stay study, fame, listening to the Word of God. America needs its servants of God more now than ever before. And understand this, even though you're a female, you can be a Moses. Please know that there is neither male nor female, neither Jew nor Gentile, and there is no excuse in any one of you not making it to the top in the being a line of David of Moses. The intake of the Word of God is the most important for it most important for you than telling others about Jesus, about Joshua, learned from Moses because of leader and a great believer encouraging one another. Look at Joshua chapter 1. Joshua chapter 1. Verse 9. Have I not commanded you, this is Joshua speaking, be strong and courageous. Do not be afraid. Do not be discouraged. This needs to be said in America today. For the Lord your God, 
will be with you wherever you go. Now look at Hebrews chapter 3, which is what we're studying, but look at another verse. Hebrews chapter 3. Look at verse 13. Hebrews 3.13. But encourage one another. We're going to study this one in detail. But encourage one another. Look at the word daily. Daily. That means Sunday, Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday, Friday, Saturday, daily, as long as it is called today, so that none of you may be hardened by sins deceitful. Now look at Hebrews chapter 10. Stay in Hebrews, but look at chapter 10. Chapter 10. Verse 24, Hebrews 10, 24. And let us consider how to stimulate one another to love and good deeds, not forsaking our own assembling together, as is the habit of some. It's the habit of some to miss church but encouraging one another and all the more as you see the day drawing near. Now look at it, Colossians. Colossians 3, Colossians chapter 3, verse 1, Colossians 3, 1. Therefore, if you have been raised with Christ, and I pray you have. Keep seeking the things that are above, where Christ is, seated at the right hand of God. Set your minds on the things that are above, not on the things that are on earth. Now let's go back to Hebrews chapter 3, verse 5. Chapter 3, verse 5. For a testimony. Actually, it is for a evidence of proof. For evidence of proof. For evidence of proof of those things which were to be spoken later. Of things being communicated which were to be spoken later. Now, see the word but? This test, this text, test, uh, is test up contrast between Moses as super believer and the Lord Jesus Christ. But, but as Christ was faithful as a son over his house, whose house we are. This is a contrast between Moses and as a servant of God, uh, a servant of God, and Jesus Christ as the adult son. This is saying that Christ is over the house of Israel. Moses is in the house, is in the house of Israel. Christ is over, over the house, introducing the uniqueness of the son. Moses is in the house. Christ is over the house. Moses is a servant, while Christ is the adult son, both over the house of Israel and over the house called the church. To test clarity, clearly, Jesus Christ is the chief cornerstone cornerstone. Jesus Christ is a chief cornerstone. That is the stone on the corner which two walls come together. One wall is Israel. Jesus Christ is the king of Israel. David's great son 
and high priest forever after the order of Melchizedek. Christ is also the head of the church, the other wall, the groom to the church, the bride. Moses testified of, re of reality. Christ is that reality. Moses dealt with shadow shadows. Christ is the fulfillment of the shadows. Okay. Now, next phrase is in verse 6 indicates we are not discussing the house of the previous building, but the house which we live in, the church. Look what it says. Whose house but Christ was faithful as a son over his house, whose house we are, we, the church, are. This refers to the church age, not the age of Israel, whose house is now over for this period. There, there were at least nine unique features of this age. Let me give it to you. There are nine unique features of this age. First, every believer is in union with Christ. It's not in the Old Testament. And every believer in the church age is in union with Christ. This was never true before. This is the baptism of the Holy Spirit. God the Holy Spirit takes every believer at the point of salvation and enters him into union with Christ. Two, every believer is indwelt by the person of Jesus Christ. Every believer is indwelt by the person of Christ. No Old Testament saint was ever indwelt by Christ. Three, every believer is indwelt by the Holy Spirit. Every believer is indwelt by the Holy Spirit, while God the Holy Spirit has a ministry of endearment and empowerment to center the Old Testament saints, the universal indwelling of the priesthood is unique to the church age. Four, the unique, the universal priesthood, the universal priesthood of every believer. For the first time in history, every believer is his own priest. That was not true in the Old Testament. Therefore, every believer must function in his priesthood. It's really interesting. My wife and I are now watching a story about the, uh, this, in the time of uh, the, Ro the Roman Catholic Church. And they made a big deal out of the priest in the Roman Catholic Church. But let me tell you something. Every believer is a member, is a priest in the church age. Every believer. No one has it over somebody else. And over the years I've been, oh, I want you to pray. Will you pray? No, you, you can really pray. No, let me tell you something. Every believer is in priesthood and can pray. Five, there is no extra biblical revelation is in this dispensation. And this makes it unique. Israel added five, re, re, five writings of Moses, but then Joshua, Judges, David's writings, on through, right? Jeremiah. So continue to change. But there is no extra biblical revelation in this dispensation, and this makes it unique. Six. We may clearly define 
grace, way of life. We may clearly define grace, way of life, superior to the sea, the superseding anything, anything that had existed in the dispensation of Israel. This is a dispensation of grace, not the law. Six, or seven, therefore, every believer, every believer is in full-time Christian service. That is major important. Every believer is in full-time Christian service. Every believer. Every believer is an ambassador for Christ. Every believer represents Christ in the devil's world. Every believer. Not many do. Not many do. But God had it set up in the church age. Every believer is in full-time Christian service and doesn't even know it. A, the intensification of the angelic conflict. I'm so thankful for my time with Bob Thame. He spent many hours teaching about the angelic conflict. Then I got four years of seminary, never mentioned, never mentioned by other, other teachers. Didn't even understand it. And it is so important. The intensification of the angelic conflict. Never before in human history has there been such an intensification of the angelic conflict. Therefore, we live in the most difficult of all dispensations. Let me repeat that. We live in most the most difficult of all dispensations, much more so, uh, so even than the tribulation of the tribulation period. While the tribulation is described in terms of rather unusual happenings, Revelation 6 through 19, there is no compare with the intensity of the angelic conflict which is exists today in church age. The tribulation is part of the age of Israel. Remember that, it's part of the age of Israel. And while it is filled with a tragic, a tragic, a, a terrible happenings and whole and world dis, dis, catastrophes will reach its beak. For a day by day struggling through the word of God, it does not compare with the church age. Remember that the church age, every believer, that will not be true in the, in the tribulation. Every believer is in full-time Christian service and therefore under conflict in the church age. Hope you understand that one. I need to emphasize that more. And finally, nine. Yeah, that's, that's, I'm not getting that. Because I thought the tribulation was going to be much, much worse. It will be more, let me repeat that. In the, therefore, we live in the late period. Now, in the tribulation is described in terms rather unusual happenings. Revelation 6 through 19. These do not compare with the intensity of the angelic conflict. The tribulation is part of the age of Israel. It's not part of the church. So it doesn't compare to what we're going through right now? It does not compare with the people, the individual people serving him. That is for the church age, full-time Christian service. Every believer is not in full-time Christian service in the tribulation. So, of course, you know, we want to thank America. So we want to thank all over, and the Christians right now are being persecuted. We are not. So our minds are kind of 
you know, blinded. Blinded. Yes. And not seeing the whole picture but, all over the world. You see what's happening for them in China. That, that yeah, movie exactly. that we're watching. Yeah. You see what's happening to people. Uh, very few people have stayed, as, as we as recall, mm -hmm. faithful to God. And uh, few people know it. Few people understand it. And during the tribulation, it'll be primarily in East, in Israel, in the, in the, way, in the West, in the uh, area of, of Israel. But. Yeah, we just have blinders on. This is it right here. Yeah. You know, and we live in a pretty. Yeah. Yeah, you have to kind of clarify that because Jesus said that, uh, that there be no, that's the worst suffering that'll ever happen in history. Suffering. Yes. That'll be suffering. Yeah, well, so. Uh, that's what I'm saying. We have to clarify what we're talking about. No, there's. It's not just the suffering, and it, the, what he, what Christ was talking about is not about all around the world. I'm talking about Israel, they will be suffering. They will be suffering. Just that group, just Israel, and and we're in more conflict now. Oh, yeah, by far. Yeah, I don't get that. Yeah. I have to say, we have to clarify exactly what... Uh, uh, Suffering from conflict. <laughs> well, good. I'll work on that and make some more. So bring, it, bring it back and bring it up. Mm -hmm. Let's look at point nine. Yeah. All believers are commanded to full to go... Uh, full-time Christian service. Every believer is commanded to love as Jesus Christ loved and his love put him on the cross. Every believer is in is his own priest. Every, every believer is in the indwelling of the Holy Spirit and is demanded to love. Every believer is demanded and that will not be true even in the, in the tribulation. Okay. Hebrews 12, uh, 6, Hebrews 6 to 3, verse 6. But Christ was faithful as son over his whole, out, whole, whole household, whose house we are, we are the church, if we, fa if we hold fast to, uh, to, uh, the confident, to confidence. Now, Right here is why the church age is more demanding than the age of Israel in the tribulation. Every believer is expected to hold fast his confidence. What happened is the as the to the help to the people in the Old Testament at Egypt at the Red Sea, then at enemies such as the Philistines in the, in the writing of the, just, of the, of the judges, uh, all of these things. But the church age is to hold fast their confidence, every one of them. This okay. is why we have the Holy Spirit and they did not have the Holy Spirit. We have the Holy Spirit. So we're talking about the church age after Christ ascended to heaven, and then it was so horrible. Yes. That's is that what you're talking about? Yes, Are, talking about the church age. Two thousand years of yes. church age. Yes. Yes. Okay. Well, we know we know then that it was horrible. It is. And. Look at Hebrews chapter 10. Hmm. Hebrews chapter 10. This is not said to Israel, but to the church. Hebrews 10, 30, 35. Hebrews 10, 35. Therefore, do not throw away your confidence, which has great Reward. Think about that. Reward. When Christ comes, he will give rewards to those who hold their confidence 
please hold yours. This applies to believers of the church age, not of Israel. The Greek word used <coughs> here has many different words to define it. Outspoken. Frankness. Unreservable. In speech. Plainness. <coughs> plainly. Openly. Publicly. And courage. Boldness. Fearlessness. Jesus Christ did not speak so as to hide his identity, but spoke in frankness. In Hebrews, believers can be assured in their faith, as 1 Timothy 3, 15, 3, 13. The word means to steer, the word to, 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 with confidence means to Continue in take in take of the word of God, and ha having oh having our steer under control, having your confidence or having your steer under control. What is what is important here is a subjunctive mood. Maybe you will steer clear. Maybe you will clear steer straight with God maybe you won't the really interesting thing here is that God gives you freedom God gives you the freedom to choose for the word of God now let me give you put another contrast the millennium the millennium is unbelievably unique Jews will be impossible to sin they will not sin. They will just be able to serve and glorify the Lord. That's beautiful. Only in the church age are you commanded this and give you the freedom to choose your way, what you want to do. <coughs> against the word of God, against Jesus Christ, or for the word of God, for Jesus Christ. Let's close in a word of prayer. I will say some more about those uh, very nine things talking about the age of Israel. I mean, the uh, tribulation and compare that with yeah, the church. I like that. Get yeah, that. Yeah, yeah. And it's closing the word of God and the word of God. Father, wow, we love Hebrews. So much to learn. So much to learn about Jesus Christ. So much to learn about ourselves. So, Father, we just thank you. Pray you'll give us more time to learn it, that we might steer the ship of our life against for our Christ. Father, we pray these things in Christ's name and for his sake. Amen.